Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video we'll be going through the Adelaide vs St Kilda game in which I caught some of it but I believe I was catching the other game which was the Melbourne vs Essendon game. So because these were on at the same time I was only able to watch bit parts of this Adelaide St Kilda game including like at the end of the when the quarter was done for the Melbourne games and uh, for the Melbourne game and the last about two, three minutes of it in general. So I did have the, the stats rolling up on this, but I didn't uh, catch the whole game in itself. But anyway, before we jump into this video, remember to like and subscribe, turn the notification bell on so you know when I upload and let's get into this video. So as you can see here, Rory Laird was the top uh, scorer for Adelaide with 133. I thought he was uh, pretty decent in the end uh, with 31 touches and 13 tackles, which would lend itself to a decent amount of CBAs, 15 out of a total of uh, 19. So yeah, he really did have a lot of CBAs, a lot of um, on-ball time, it seems like. And But then again, a lot of his disposals were on the wing, which um, on the, the left-hand wing, which is a little bit weird to see. But I think that if we do just do a quick little check of this, you'll find um, that if we go to, uh, where is it? One second, round 18, this game. I want this game. I don't want that. Please, I just want this game. You'll see Rory Laird here has um, this heat map here. Um, then we just go to him in the general. I just want to see almost a blown up version and the heat map doesn't really change too too much to be honest with you um, So yeah, I don't think that I think he's still got that CBA role um, And it's kind of a weird one uh, Then you get Jordan Dawson 114. I thought he was also pretty impactful in the last quarter with a 42 16 38 18 42 Rory Laird just was all round 20 29 35 49 a huge second half from Rory Laird of an 84 after only 49 in the first half but yeah those two were just absolutely huge and it was kind of the game for them Rory Laird in the absolute wet is going to get a lot of tackles and he ended up with 13 Jordan Dawson with nine but he also got two marks as well but he loves to kick the ball and this was sort of the game where you can just kick it and take um take ground uh and that's all that this game was about uh riley o'brien 51 hitouts in the end for him 10 does uh 13 touches seven tackles so he ended up on a 110 but isn't going to be that impactful down the line anyway as a ruck then you've got the likes of keys here who ended up with 24 touches eight tackles one goal three a little bit inaccurate but absolutely huge in the last quarter with a 55 and huge in the second quarter with the 38, but I just don't think he's going to be consistent enough given that we've seen him go 35, 60, 99, 79, 110. Shoal, 90. Zach Taylor, 86. A guy that I've thought about bringing in, but I think there will be other options um, around not maybe going for him, maybe going for a cheap 23rd Primo or something like that or um, something rather like that. And I don't know whether he might get um, a game or not next week. We'll have to look into that. But he was really good. Could have probably stretched on a little bit more, gotten himself almost to the ton. Um, but yeah, he resurrected his break even. And I believe his break even, if I just check quickly, it's going to be, I would say, probably 20 or so at uh, maximum. So yeah, he really did do what he needed to do. Um, let me just check here with him. Taylor, one second. He has a break even of uh, minus 10, which is, yeah, he's just completely resurrected that break even of, what was it originally? It was originally 65 and that 86 has just turned it around. It's basically outdone all of the, what he needed to do. And yeah, so really, really uh, good to see him have a negative break even, but I don't know whether I'll grab him up or not, um, just because I don't know if he's going to be more impactful than someone else that could actually be playing on ground or be a premium status. Um, Taylor Saligo, um, Saligo again, just one of those guys that seems like Will Day, Saligo, even Clayton Oliver can almost be put in the same um, bandwidth uh, that they are just going to be sort of 85 to 90 guys, have those occasional 110 guys uh, game, sorry, but it doesn't look like he's going to be up there specifically. Billy Dowling it went absolutely huge in the last quarter. So I've thought about keeping him, thought about chucking him, etc. And I think I'm actually going to keep him just because of the mid-forward status and the fact that 
this wasn't really his necessarily his greatest uh, game for him to be playing in as a winger, um, who they sort of depend a little bit on marks. If we look at uh, this, probably going to give it away, but I'll look on um, look on my phone and, and give you the Billy Dowling uh, stats for you. So match stats, he's got nine marks, five marks, four marks, three marks, one mark, um, twenty two marks across five games, and he's only got um, six. 11 tackles in five games and five of them came in this one so i think it really shows that he uh really does rely a little bit on being on the outside and getting that extra mark there whereas uh it doesn't really help at the moment that he doesn't really have that so i think that's why he is um i would say a little bit uh did struggle a little bit to score and then did uh help with the last quarter blitz that he had where he just got um, a lot of touches in the last quarter, ended up getting a 41 point last quarter. I'll look also to see who, because it seems like a lot of the Crows guys scored really well. Keys are 55 in the last, Marshall 55, Laird 49, O'Brien 46, Dawson 42, Phil 42, Dowling 41, and his 41 came on 10 touches, a goal and two tackles. So there's that, um, and then the rest of these guys literally don't matter. It was good to see Phil Thorpe back out there. Um, basically had 30 minutes or so of game time, which was good to see as well. And uh, yeah, 32 minutes of game time was good to see from him. So he'll be uh, probably, I would, I, I'm hearing that he should be playing full game next week, but we'll wait and see on that one. Then you have Rel Marshall here, 150. He just went off in the last quarter in 88 second half after a 62 first. And yeah, I didn't see this necessarily coming. 48 hitouts for him, 9 tackles and 20 touches was always going to be huge. And um, yeah, when you get the rain like that, and um, I mean, I thought that Riley O'Brien would be a little bit more restrictive, but maybe I got my um, matchups a little bit wrong. But yeah, I didn't expect him, especially with him playing a little bit forward, I didn't expect him to do that well. Wangadeen Malira at 106, he was absolutely huge. 28-28, uh, 26-24, just consistent, and I believe we might have even scored a ton in Supercoach as well. Let me just double-check that, because he's sort of the guy that just is always there or thereabouts on that marker. He did score a 98 in Supercoach, so was just shy of the ton, and considering the wet conditions, it wasn't the worst score for him. Steele with a 105, um, 19 touches, 5 marks, 10 tackles, and this is exactly what the steal that we want to see. But of course, everyone's traded him out already, and now he's starting to fire again. Um, and the best steal, the 120, 130 type steal, is when he just gets those 25 touches or so. Another sort of four or five kicks and another three or four handballs, and that gets him probably up to a 120, 125, I would expect. Yeah, 121. Yeah, that, the math checks out. Uh, Philippou here with a 93. I thought he was... I really do like him in this new role. I think he can be one that uh, maybe drifts a little bit. Um, so it will be interesting to see how it goes. But I was just a little bit worried with him with this um, 68 as well as I think the 26 also came with full time um, in the midfield or majority time in the midfield. So I'm really intrigued to see how this works out for him. But I'm... I'm one that may jump on because he's got the West Coast matchup this week, and I think that that could be a really positive matchup for inside mids. If we go to St. Kilda, I think he had 60% again. Um, 63, 68, so you can see here, 48% here, 48% here, but he's getting even more time. He spent more time away, and I think this is the building of a really good player. I've always rated Philippu high. Um, I think it came last year. I thought that Philippu maybe would take the step this year, but I genuinely think he could be a third-year breakout because that would line up, wouldn't it? That he, yeah, because he was Harry Sheasel and um, draft. Um, I remember contemplating putting Sheasel or Philippu in the um, in the forward line uh, week one last year, and it seems like he is going to be your prototypical third-year breakout. So we'll just have to monitor this because he is already starting to, I think get up there in terms of um in terms of average for fantasy i don't know what it is at the moment but it's now at 56 with six games to go he has played um 11 games so he's at um 616 points um if we say we give him another 600 that'll be 1216 divided by 17 71 so yeah even if he goes at 100 for the rest of the year um, he's still going to be averaging like 71, 72. And I think that's the type of player that you can take a risk on taking a, um, 
uh, like taking that next step up and he should be from my uh, working it out he should keep forward status because um, 17 games and even eight of them playing full midfield time he's still going to get that forward status so um, yeah 35 percent midfield uh, sorry forward st- uh, time to keep that forward status he may clock both mid forward which will be definitely helpful next year but I think he will definitely continue with a forward um, status and I think he's one of those guys that will break out like we saw butters and Rosie I think he's following that trend of, of being that forward or that mid forward and being in that category there. So I'm really intrigued with this pick, and I might take a flyer on him given that he's got the West Coast matchup, and then he becomes the 23rd primo in the forward line, etc. and there's things that you can work around and do. Um, and I could use maybe even um, a Hugh, uh, a Barnett and stuff like that and put Jackson off the field or whatever like that and if I needed to be, etc. But yeah, I really like Philippu. Uh, Wood, Clark... Burns, Sinclair, Battle, Sharman, uh, Jones, Butler, etc., etc. None of these guys will really matter too much. Um, Sean Maker got off to an absolute flyer and then fell apart. So he's an interesting one. I still think he's got a really kind of role as well in, uh, in, in a side that he should be able to score 60 each week, which is just going to keep on making cash. So um, I'm not tempted to get rid of him just yet, but there is a thought about getting rid of him just to get some more flexibility because that um, defender in that role really does, um, in that utility spot for me, really does limit it. But I'm more tempted to just get rid of the the cash now for other guys, given that he's still got a really low break even. Um, And other guys here, Clark could be interesting, but I think he's more in a different role now. Let me just double check that. Where is he? Hunter Clark here. Yeah, he's really dropping out of the CBAs now because they're giving more to... Philippu, and also Zach Jones got 38, 32%, which was quite weird not going to lie. And then Sinclair, 78, 84. I don't really like Sinclair in this midfield role compared to off this halfback role that he was getting here. He's much better off the halfback, so I'd like to see him dropped back to the halfback line uh, for fantasy purposes. Um, Sharman, Jones, Butler, we talked about, yeah, none of these guys matter too much. Bonnet is starting to fall apart, so yeah, his role's really been overtaken, which is a weird one, but... Um, yeah, I'm glad that I jumped out of him when I did because he is now already like 150k down from when I actually jumped out at like 755. And in the end, he serviced me what he needed to do and has dropped back down again. Webster, Wilson, Owies, um, Owen, sorry, Higgins, Parfit, uh, pa- Patton, and Membry. I don't know why I said Parfit. But anyway, that is the video there going through the Adelaide versus St. Kilda game. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.